what are you pre- <laughs> what are you preventing yourself from feeling? I'd say I'm preventing myself from feeling like a hundred percent. I'd say like a hundred percent connection with other people, whether that be friendship, whether that be family. Um, just because like I've been through a rough life, man, and it's it's not that I don't trust people, but I just feel like people are always gonna let you down, you know. And at the end of the day, like Allah is not going to let you down. If you are true to yourself, you're not gonna let you down. Let yourself down, I should say. So that's something that I'm preventing myself from doing right now. Would it be nicer if I was, you know, more open and more connected with people? Yeah, of course, a hundred percent. But at the same time, like I may do. I may do. Tell me something about your mother that you didn't appreciate until you got older. Uh I'd say her ability to use money. Because, you know, she she didn't work for a very long period of time. She was just, you know, trying to take care of me and my sister growing up. And, you know, I feel like that's how that's, that's how it should be. You know, a, a mother should prioritize her children first. And because she wasn't working, she was using the child support money that she was receiving for me and my sister. But she was rationing that money so well to where we never had anything that we needed. We always had food on the table. We always had a roof over our heads. We always were able to do the things that we really wanted to do as kids. So it's like, I didn't appreciate that till I got older and I saw, wow, it's it's actually really hard to ration out money. But alhamdulillah, man. And name one thing you love about the way you've been raised. Man, this is gonna sound uh sadistic is it sadistic when you when you like to be you like pain this is gonna sound sadistic but i actually love the fact that i was abused as a kid and that's so weird bro because it's like i've had to go through so much turmoil so much you know pain psychologically spiritually mentally emotionally all this stuff uh, physically definitely physically but it made me into who i am today and if I would have never gone through that, I would probably be very soft. You know, I would probably be a very soft individual and um, I probably would have never done self-improvement. I probably would never be here. But then again, you know, Allah knows best. Who is your biggest cheerleader? Uh, I'd have to say myself. At the end of the day, with other people, they're only gonna they're only gonna lead you on, or not lead you on, but they're only gonna support you when you support yourself. So like if you don't support yourself, they're not gonna support you. So like if you say you wanna be a professional football player, like if you don't see it yourself, they're not gonna see it. They're not gonna support that. If you don't support yourself in it. And like it, it made me realize like, all right. I got to be the one that pushes myself. I got to be the one that supports myself. So, like, if I say I'm going to do martial arts, if I say I'm going to open up a gym, I have to be the one that's supporting myself. I got to be the one that's pushing myself and that's there for me. What was the point in your life when you started believing in yourself? I'd say a point in my life where I started believing in myself was once I started to get past my addiction to pornography. Because for some reason, when I was addicted to pornography, it's like I had this this very like limiting belief pattern and, and I would always put myself down and say that I wasn't worthy of anything, that I was um that I was a low life, that uh I didn't deserve to have friends, to have people that were next to me because I'm over here self sabotaging myself. And then when I started getting past that addiction, it's like I don't know, like that 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 voice in my head started changing where it's like instead of me saying like, oh, man, like I suck, I would start looking at myself. I'm like, you know what? Like, you're all right. You're all right. You know, and then like the more time progressed, I started seeing myself I was like, yo, like, you got this. Like, you, you're good, bro. Like not in an arrogant way, but like in that like self-assuring way. Yeah. 
Think about someone in your life that is no longer here. What is one lesson they taught you? Hmm. I would say, I would think about my nephew. Uh, my, my nephew passed away at about six, seven months old. And I actually never got to hold him, which, you know, like I'm saying that now, it, it doesn't affect me now, but before, like it was something that affected me strongly. And I say he taught me to quit putting things off like there's really no perfect time and like right now is the perfect time and that's that's why i say in my videos the time is now because it's like you don't know you you don't know what's gonna happen in the next few minutes in the next few hours in the next few days like you know a lot could say you know what your time's up you have one hour left and you won't know you have one hour left so it's like dude when he passed away it just it made me really start changing the way that i see things and the way that i approach life